I'm simply going to introduce our host for today, Angela. And Angela is not only the person who represents this program, this is one this is the person who wrote this program. So Angela, it's all yours. Please take it away. Great. Welcome everybody. Thank you so much, Marsha. Um, thank you all for being here. Uh, very happy to be able to present this training. Uh, to each of you, I know you all are busy, so hopefully hopefully, this will be something that is of added value. Um, we believe it is. But essentially, as Marcia has, has noted, so I'm Angela. I am the, I go by the Chief Learning Architect at TGX, but I also wear a lot of different hats. And I am the author of Computers One Click at a Time, One Click at a Time. So I hope you all have that workbook, which basically the content in that workbook as well as the curriculum have been informed by my experience in the classroom working with adult learners. Um, so I have served as a professor. Um, so I've worked with college students, but also working adults. And then I've also done some consulting um, with a range of adult learners, ranging from those who were formerly incarcerated and creating content to help with the transition. So like workforce programs to get them acclimated. Um, into a new, better job. And then also we even worked with professional athletes, NFL players, helping them understand the importance of financial planning and wealth building. But as far as computers, one click at a time is concerned, it is more of a digital literacy workbook. And there also is um, a heavy bent on employability skills. And so basically what I wanna do during this training is to help you understand what you're getting in the curriculum and how that might align with what you're doing in the classroom, because we understand that you all are doing some really great work um, within your own programs. And then just to provide some tips to help you um, onboard with as less pain as possible. And it's actually um, pretty painless. It's pretty simple. Everything's really intuitive, but also to ensure that you get the best use of the program because we're all about advancement. And that means helping you advance your learners, your adult learners, helping to elevate them to another level. And we know with all the things that happen and that can go on, that's not always easy. So. Just we want to equip you with the skills to be able to do that in an efficient manner. And so finally, I'm going to provide a live demonstration of the actual platform just so you can see how easy it is to navigate. And um, and if you have any questions, just you know, let me know. Feel free to use the the, the chat function. So essentially, as far as the workbook, I think Anne held the workbook, a copy up. Thank you, Anne. There are seven lessons, okay, and I'm gonna just kind of give you a highlight of what those lessons are, but the content is de designed specifically for adult learners, and there's an undertone of practicality and relevance. So I'll probably use those words a lot, but I like to say that the workbook was designed as well as the online curriculum to be practical and relevant so that an adult learner that comes and is using this program will basically be able to practice some of the things that they'll need to do anyway in everyday life. So for example, paying a bill online, <laughs> um, you know, that's there, there's a module not only in the workbook, but also online. So there are 33 learning modules and then 30 plus exercises that are engaging um, and interactive. And then there's vocabulary as well as answers. And so Again, this is for low literacy adults. So I would say a reading level anywhere between, you know, five to around five to six. Um, but essentially that is sort of the salient features of the workbook. And then here on this slide, you'll just see how it's, it's broken out, the seven lessons. So there's computer basics, uh, the desktop, and the computer basics, by the way, Although it says computer basic, something like purchasing a computer isn't always so basic. And I know we had a really good testimonial that came out of the heartland um, in Oklahoma, where there was actually an adult learner that came and was then motivated by the first couple of sessions to go out and purchase his own laptop. 
And so he had the confidence to be able to do that just with some of the basic information that he learned in the class. And so, you know, we were so excited because that's what we're here for. And the instructors were happy because we're here to help them advance and to be able to do these things um, in an independent manner. So, so at any rate, purchasing a computer, what's involved with that? You know, how do you know how much hard drive space you need or what kind of processor, et cetera? And so I say computer basics, but you know, some of that is even harder for those of us who are even more proficient to tease out. So we try to do that in a way that adult learners will, will understand. So of course, using a mouse and a keyboard might be uh, very, very great basic for some of your users, but it, there are other users who basically need to reinforce some of the basics with some of those functions. And so there's the desktop, and of course the desktop will review icons and the location of those common icons on the desktop, as well as how to manage your windows. Um, and a lot of this is from a Windows-based PC. It's not, you know, heavily, you know, Mac-based. And so I am seeing a couple of questions. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Okay, so a comment was just made to please mute your microphone because I guess there was static coming from someone. So thanks. Okay, software basics. Can everybody hear me okay though? Okay. So software basics, so we do talk about operating systems because there are many, and now that the workplace is becoming more automated, there are different operating systems used. Word processing, so we don't necessarily just focus like on a Microsoft Word, but the way the language is, it's generally word processing. So someone that doesn't have Word um, could, could basically still engage with this content using like Google Docs. And the same with spreadsheets, it's not, basically just Microsoft Excel, but also could include, you know, with the basic level, Google Sheets. And then there's antivirus software. Um, using the internet is basically going to cover those basic tasks that we all use the internet to do, whether it's shopping online, paying bills, um, depositing checks, surfing the internet, as well as, you know, basically using social media. And so the using social media is not the how-to of it, but basically the how to be careful and what to and what not to do when using social media, not to be exposing too much of your personal or private information. And then with using email, that is pretty much less than five, and it covers everything from the common domains that are used, as well as sending and receiving emails, how do you send a, an attachment, and then understanding folders, as well as being able to recognize suspicious emails and more of that covered in the next lesson when we, we get into online safety and privacy with basically explaining like what a hacker is and explaining some of the tactics that hackers use and things you can look for, what's problematic in an email, um, and then understanding cookies, because as we all are on websites and then we find out we're getting an ad <laughs> based on a site we went to, like, why is that happening? And can you basically disable cookies? And so again, you can kind of see this practicality uh, to the content. And so the last, um, lesson in the workbook is actually real world applications. And so in this lesson, this is kind of more about the career readiness content. And so it's looking at everything from job search. And then there's, you know, we get a lot of good feedback about this because students can actually do a self-assessment on their interests using the RIASEC model, which is basically just to take a quick quiz to see what their interests are and what are some of those occupations that align with their interests. And so um, there's also information on creating a professional profile. So that is sort of the workbook. And just keep in mind, so the, the workbook is the foundation and then it's the companion to the online curricula. And what happens with the online curriculum is that then we go into 12 micro courses that serve to reinforce the content that's in the workbook. And in some instances introduced new content. 
But I'm just going to pause there just for a minute because I know I've been going on and I just want, does anybody have any con any questions about what's actually in the workbook before I go into the online curriculum? Okay. All right, well, we will continue. So here we have 12 micro courses, okay, but really 24, because with each micro course, there is a teacher version. So this teacher version is for if you're an instructor or if you're a facilitator, if you're a tutor, um, that version of that same course is just going to be there to help you facilitate and teach your course. So there, there might be answers, um, there might be um, questions that you can pose if you're doing some discussions um, with your students, whether online or face to face in the classroom. But essentially, um, we have broken the content down into these bite sized chunks of these micro courses. And then the other thing that's good about this is it helps to build the confidence of the learner so that as they go through, you know, they can not only go through a course and get instant feedback, but then also um, for some of the learners that let's say maybe using the desktop is just too basic for them. So they may not wanna take that course and they can go on to something that is a little bit more um, advanced or in tune with what they want to learn. So um, there is some flexibility there in terms of how you assign a course or what course you want your students to take. But again, that engagement piece is really important um, in terms of you know, having crossword puzzles, um, and the gamification. And because Third Ed is a learning management system, there are those features that allow for you as the instructor or the administrator to go in and to see as well as export some of the reporting data. And I'm gonna show you how to do that with a live demonstration. And then finally, this last bullet here, there is a certificate of completion. So here are the micro courses. Um, from again, computer basics, they all basically align with the actual content that's in the workbook outside of information literacy and video meetings, but, and then Google Docs is not covered in the workbook. So again, as I mentioned before, some of the courses reinforce what's in the workbook and then others introduce new learning or new information. And those are the 12. And so this schematic, because our content aligns with the North Star credentials, we broke down the courses um, the way that North Star kind of categorizes. They have computer skills and they have software skills, and then they have technology and daily life. And this is how, if you are using North Star to help your students or encouraging them to get a North Star certification, um, this is sort of the categories that those courses would fall under. And again, I said, it you know, our curriculum is aligned to the North Star standards. Um, the only thing we don't really cover into detail is Mac OS, um, which is the operating system on a Mac. So this is the new Reader's Press portal. And this is where you all will go um, to basically get your privilege, well, to sign up initially and to log in after that. And um, this is the URL and hopefully you all got the implementation guide that I sent out, but that has this information as well. And it just walks you through how to initially sign up. And you can choose how you want your students to sign up. You might want them to also take this route of signing up themselves, um, or you might want to enroll them. And so initially, just to make sure they get the right course, um, you can do either, um, whichever is most helpful for you. We have customers that tend to do both. And so they're really, it's just whatever you're more comfortable with in terms of the overall preference. Like there's no major benefit to doing one or the other. It's just, you know, being sort of on the ground and there directly what is going to be most effective or beneficial for your adult learner. 
So here, just a couple of tips before I get into the live demonstration, <laughs> um, just to kind of help you uh, understand the lay of the land, if you will. So your courses are all customized by your organization. So when I showed you, for example, those 12 courses, I'll just go back up here, the computer basics, the desktop, you all will have an individual version for your specific organization. So here, computer basics at Milwaukee Public Library, information literacy at Racine Literacy Council, for example. And so you will have your specific 12 courses for your specific organization. There are FAQs that you can um, access on your, uh, on your dashboard. So if you do have some questions or something's not working, we try to update those based on questions that we have customers have. And then of course you can always reach out to me and hopefully most of you have my email address. Um, it is included at the end of this presentation, but of course I'm here as a resource for you. And then the good news is there's blended learning flexibility. So we have customers that do a variety of things. Some meet face-to-face -face and there's no blended learning outside of maybe assigning homework to that's online for um, the learners, but basically their class sessions are face-to-face -face, um, weekly. And then others kind of break it down where they might do a mixture of both. And then some are complete, um, it's all online. So that's really up to you. So there is that flexibility. Um, again, it's just based on, it works either way. The thing that definitely works is just to make sure you have a facilitator. And when I say that, whether that's a tutor, um, someone the student can reach out to um, and someone that basically is just facilitating the, the learning because there are discussion questions the students are asked that you might wanna go over with them. But the main thing is your student will be submitting assignments and someone needs to review those assignments to make sure that you know, basically they're graded so the student can move on and know whether or not you know, they have um, you know, completed the assignment correctly or not. So, the other thing I wanna highlight is that when we get into the third at LMS, there are three roles, and this is probably the, I would say probably the primary tip that you'll need to remember. And those roles are, and this is also in that implementation guide, but it's administrator, instructor, and learner. Now, when you sign up, by default, you will be in the learner role. And we just put everyone there because um, we then assign the privileges within 24 hours for the instructor roles. And that's just to make sure that we understand who is a student and we can reconcile who the actual administrator and or teachers are. And so in the administrator role, that's the role where you will basically be able to see your, your dashboard. You will be able to enroll users, create new users. You will be able to basically access the reporting data. The instructor role is how you enter the actual courses. That you have. So whether that's one of the student versions of the course or the actual instructor version of the course. And then the learner role allows you to see the course and the you know, navigate throughout the platform the way your students would as a learner. So hope that's clear. And then just to keep in mind, your licenses are a year. And so they begin when activated. So I just want to underscore, let's say you have a student that leaves the program and it's halfway through, um, you can replace that license with another student. Um, you, we just ask that you deactivate the student who left and then you can enroll um, another student within that one year period. And then you will receive email notifications. Um, they will come from, I mean, not a lot, but just for example, once you have a student that 
has submitted a, an assignment, um, you'll get an email notification as well as you'll have notifications within the learning management system itself. But they will come from no reply at talentlms.com. And so that is from us. It'll say from thirded.com. So that is coming basically from us. But just so that you are aware, it's not someone trying to spam you or it's not a hacker. <laughs> and then I also want to just make you aware that we say to start with the, um, make sure you can see this, okay. <laughs> I think there was a glitch there. Start with the computer basics course. So even though it might be too basic for some of your learners, it's just a good way to establish kind of the baseline of where students are. And, um, and again, it builds confidence. So someone that can go through that and just do well and you know, pass all the knowledge checks and complete the assignments, it's just a great confidence booster, but it's just a good place to, to start. So we recommend that you start everybody with the computer basics course first, and then finish whatever finishing means, um, whatever completing the program means for your learner. Um, there is an end of class feedback course. And with that, it's just basically a brief survey and that just helps us collect data about the experience um, of the users of the platform. So we know what we may need to improve or do differently or what's working well. So whatever that journey looks like for your individual learner, it may not be all 12 courses. It might be six of the 12 or eight of the 12. We just ask that you if you have a learning plan or they, you have them map a learning plan for themselves that basically at the end of that learning journey, they complete the end of class, um, end of class feedback course. Okay, and so we do have incentives to nudge them along <laughs> in the terms of badges, so a bit of gamification. There's nothing you need to do with this. It's all automated. Um, and in fact, unless you pull reporting data, I don't think you even have, you don't even see this. You just see what badges maybe they learn. But of course, there's a lot of data, evidence-based research that basically underscores the importance of these nudges and the gamification to help motivate students um, so that they will complete. And at the end of the day, we do want them to obtain their certifications to get the learning. Because again, we'll all, we're all about advancement and elevation. And, um, and I'm sure you all are as well. And we just want you to help equip your learners to be able to do that. So the activity uh, badges, by the way, is based on logins. Again, this is just something that's as a default me mechanism within the system itself. The learning badges have to do with when they complete a course. Um, they will get a learning badge and then the test, as they pass tests, they will get test badges. And these are basically just the knowledge checks, which by the way, they can retake. <laughs> so there are sort of incentives. This is not about right or wrong. This is just basically being able to understand the information, have that confidence to move forward and have that reinforcement so that they can thrive in the digital eco economy. And then there are certification badges that basically um, are based on the certifications that they get. And so they can get a certification for each course that they complete. And this is what their certification looks like, by the way. And it's a PDF document that once they complete a course, they will get it. And then the great thing, as you can see here on the slide, is basically there's the first name and last name. And then the course will say, for example, Computer Basics at Adult Learning Center. So that takes it back to your individual organization by having that course name associated with um, the organization itself. And so are there any questions? Because now I want to move to the live demonstration. And I just wanna make sure that you all kind of understand from a big picture standpoint, what you're getting with the computer one click at a time um, instructional materials. Okay, so I am going to 
stop sharing real fast and then I'm going to reshare because I have to share a different screen. Okay, so now we're actually at the platform. And this is the New Readers Press portal. So this is where you and your learners will come. So the first time you will sign up here, it's really easy to sign up. And again, all of this is not meant to be a chore. Um, it's really simple. You're gonna see how simple this is. So you're just gonna sign up and uh, you'll be creating an account. And then when you come back, you'll log in, but because I've already signed up, I'm just gonna go in here as to show you what your dashboard will look like. And let me see. Um, I can never remember my passwords right now. Okay. So here we are, so we're inside. And so this is what you will see after that 24 hour period. Um, well, you'll see this, but you'll come in and you'll see, you'll be a learner. So as a learner, you will not see the reports or the groups, you will just see your courses. But once we give you the privileges as a learn, I'm sorry, instructor slash administrator, this is what your dashboard will look like. And this is also for your tutors. And then you'll see this kind of navigation here where there's the administrator role, the instructor role, as well as the learner role. And those are just the three most important things to remember. The administrator role will allow you to see the reports and mainly you will want to access the reports for your particular course. And I'll show you how to do that. The instructor role, what? will actually present the classes, okay? So all, all of the individual courses, so like those 12 basic courses, and these are different courses here, but you can see I have computer basics at Adult Learning Center. I have computer basics here at Community Center for Immigrants, I think it is, it's in here. And you'll see the T version, so that's the teacher version here um, to distinguish from the student's version. And it's okay, regardless of which one you go in, just know the teacher version, that's where you're gonna have the solutions um, and then you're gonna have the answers to questions that are posed to the students. But basically, um, and you're gonna have instructor notes and I'll kind of demonstrate that. Now the learner version is gonna look a bit of the same, except for this is kind of what the student is going to see. And I wanna go back to the administrator version, as, I'm sorry, the instructor version as well, because when you're in the instructor version, you will see this little pencil is assignments. You'll see them within the course itself, but this will also show you some pending assignments that you need to grade, okay? So here there's a student um, and it's very simple to grade. They put in a, <laughs> and it says grade, what you can do, you don't have to give a grade, you would just have passed or not passed. And in this case, because that student just put in a, I would put not passed. And I think actually I did that, no, A or T's, okay. So anyway, you have to be careful and this is why you need a facilitator because some students won't actually do an assignment. They'll put an NA in there and um, you know, then you can say not passed and they'll have to go back and retake it or they will just not have passed that assignment. But for most of the quizzes and assignments, there is the ability to do at least one retake, okay? Okay, so I wanted to point that out and I'm gonna go back home here. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go into the student version of the course and then I'll go into the instructor version. So this is what the actual computer basics course looks like. So you can see there are icons here. Um, this is like a knowledge check. Um, the pencil is an actual assignment, okay? Um, so there's a using a keyboard assignment here where the student actually is just going to type and there's information about how you do a screenshot and then they can submit their answers. So they will actually be doing practical things like uploading a file um, 
they will be texting replies. And so there are videos, um, there are crossword puzzles that they will do. And so in this instance, I'm just gonna show you here, this lesson one key terms crossword puzzle aligns to the workbook, the vocabulary that's from the lesson one um, that's in the workbook. And then there's an interactive version here. So the student could actually go here and this is what is instructed to do. Um, you have the ability as the instructor, if you want, some instructors want to print a hard copy of the actual um, crossword puzzles that we have. So you can do that if you want, but it's just as easy <laughs> to basically just have your student um, com complete it online. And so what we have a lot of folks doing, um, I'm just gonna do what's that five down computers that can be worn and track health and fitness data. So wearables. So what happens is you're instructed to save. And when you submit, the student can check their answer. Okay. And so that's correct. If it, you know, we're not correct, they could go back. But basically, once they do all of they complete the actual crossword puzzle. Um, they are instructed to take a screenshot and they are shown how to do that, whether they use the snip and sketch or they you know, basically just want to um, do a screenshot using the, the keys on the keyboard, which are different for a lot of different keyboards. But that's where you as the instructor would come into play because you could advise them as far as the best way based on the functions that are available. Um, you know, whether they're using a laptop or a Chromebook, or they actually have, you know, Microsoft Windows where they can actually use that snip and sketch function, and then they would save it and then upload it back in the course shell. And so as the instructor, you would actually already have the answers um, to this information. So let me for a second, go back home. So I'm in the student course. I'm going to go to the instructor version, for example, just because I want to show you here. And I'm going to go here to the answers. And so you have the PDF version of the answers, and not just for crossword puzzle, but also for different assignments. So let's say, for example, purchasing a computer. So in the student version, um, there's a session on storage devices. And it says, can you identify each device? OK. And so the student and their version are to submit one, two, one through five of what they think those devices are. And you know, if they make a good effort of, you know, figuring out or basically submitting an answer for what they believe these answers are, you can say you, they, that they pass, but then you are given the actual answers um, here. So, as well as some instructor notes. And these instructor notes, by the way, they relate not only to what's in the course shell, but also what's in the workbook. So what we do is we always tell the instructors, you know, start with the workbook. So like for computer basics, you would start with lesson one. And once they compete everything there, then to go online and to get the extra instructional resources and materials that basically reinforce and or introduce new learning information. Okay, so. That is, for example, just an overview of the computer basics course. Um, I could go through, I'm in the instructor version, but there are multiple ways to maneuver. Um, as you can see, there are knowledge checks, um, quite a bit of information. And again, this is the instructor version, um, wearable devices. So a lot of this, there is rough, relevance to the content. And then there's even this uh, VR virtual reality demonstration where couples after a wedding are being teleported to really nice places. And so um, again, students can see how 
some of the latest technologies are being used and being used in industry by companies. Um, but I'm just quickly going through this. But I want to go back now. Are there any questions? Again, I'm just in one of the, the courses, but I just want to give you a sense of, and I'm going to pause there just a minute to take a look. Okay. Um, Okay, Anne, thank you. Sorry. You're welcome. <laughs> I just, I, I'm, a, I'm a little concerned. Um, I just want to make sure because I, you know, I, I come at things from a different perspective, but I always kind of want to channel instructors whenever I sit through a presentation. <laughs> like if I didn't really know anything about this, what would I want to know? And I, I think the, I think the part that needs to be, I think should be clear for everybody is that with by purchasing that classroom set or Marsha buying that classroom set for each location that 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 each one each one has their own individual class where their name will show up when you set them up is that correct yes so when they come in um they will be able to get a course and i just want to go back so once they log in but it's not until that 24 hour period. And so then they will be able to enroll in that course. And so let's go back to make sure I'm answering your question. Let me just go back home. Okay, so. And actually, so like use an example of like either, you know, maybe John or, you know, Deborah, you know, any one of theirs, um, like once they've been on your end onboarded, what's the next thing that's gonna happen to get into the program to start to use it? Okay, so once they've been onboarded, they basically, so it depends on how you onboard it. So for example, if you're the instructor, you just want to add the user and you have John, you can go ahead and put John in. Um, you have John's email address. Um, hopefully they have an email address. We do have some users that don't have it. So you would put in John, let's just say Smith. Um, John needs to have, and this is why a lot of the, the users will have the individual students sign up themselves. What will be helpful since we are doing this onboarding with multiple organizations is that if you have like tutors, for example, who are not student, students, it would be helpful to email me and let me know who is a student versus an instructor and or tutor. Um, like that, that, that would be helpful. Um, we go in and we do quality control anyway, but so for example, and, and the reason I say this is because we do have a lot of customers who just have their learners enroll themselves and they're told to get a course so it's very important and maybe it's better that i just show that um, when you sign up for example so let's say i just sign up as john smith and i have an email address i'm going to use angela and let's say i just use Oh, James Smith 29. And I create a password that is easy to okay. remember. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, and they could do that. And that's what a lot of adult ed providers are recommending that students just use their mobile phone number because that is a unique number. Um, I use something different, so that's okay. Um, and you can see here, I didn't use password that was strong enough. So I'm gonna use a different one. And we're gonna try again. And so this is typical. And then you might have to go through this um, process of verifying. Okay. All right, so this password is not strong enough. <laughs> okay, so this could happen. Let's see, maybe if I, oh, okay. 
All right. So this could happen. So within your implementation guide, by the way, you have instructed instructions on what is a strong password. And so the mobile phone number actually does not work because you have to have at least one uppercase and one lowercase number. So just keep that in mind and hopefully that's not a problem. Okay, so this is just terms of service. So this is exactly what it's going to look like. And they're gonna see this get your first course, okay? So this is where you will have to make sure you tell them, I want you to get computer basics at Adult Learning Center, or I want you to get computer basics at Milwaukee Public Library, okay? And that's why I said, just start everybody with computer basics. Um, just to make sure that you have everybody enrolled in a course. And then they'll get the course and you could get the course as well. Is so everybody still able to see my screen? And then they'll get an email and then it'll say you have this course. So as soon as it says you have this course, if I go home, I should have this course and I do. And so they could start using this course as a learner and so from, again, the learner's perspective, they could start the course and they're gonna see the content. And so the information, the reason everything's grayed out is because it's in sequential order. So unlike the privilege that you will have where you can just move in any order and see everything, they will be going through the course in sequential order. You mean in the teacher guide, in the teacher version of it? I'm sorry? You're talking about that the student will see this. Yes. Um, but the teacher edition has everything open so the teacher can jump around it anywhere yes. they want. Okay. The teacher's version is in any order, but this is what the student is going to see. So thank you, Anne. I hope that's, that's helpful as to how easy it is for the student, as long as they don't make the mistake that I did of not creating a strong enough password. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's it. I mean, it's pretty simple. And so, so that's that situations. So I'm going to log out there and then I'm going to come back in again as the instructor and you will go through that same process. But initially everything's going to be grayed out for you as the teacher because you won't have instructor privileges. So you will have to wait 24 hours because we do that just to make sure that everything lines up with the records that we have that you are in fact the instructor or, and or administrator. So any questions about that before I go in and show you, I guess, just briefly how to use some of the reporting data? All questions are good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back in and thank you for that as the um, instructor with my Password. Okay, so now I'm back here. Okay, so let's say I want to go to reports because I want to see how everybody's doing and I'm just going to pull up, for example, this course. Okay, so I have eight in my course. And so you see here this export, like, so this is the big picture course data um, completed, learners in progress, training time. You can export this out to an Excel data. So see how uh, immediately you're going to pop up windows. So you could select your folder as to when you want it, to, where you want to save this data. So it's pretty simple there. Um, what you are going to want, to, and then if you wanted to see the progress of your users. So again, this is a different course, but this will be so you can see the progress of where your users are. And then let me just, okay, so here S. Lewis has completed. So this is a student in the course. Let's say you want to export this data. You could export this data. You could see how they've done on their tests. Um, you could see how they've done on their assignments. You can see what certificates they've been awarded. They, they have that one. Now going back to, let me see. Okay, so, this is their progress. There's also an infographic that you could see 
everything that they've done. And this is just a graphic file. So you can also export that, except it's just the graphic. So it's not into the Excel data like the other one um, was. And I see kind of something's going on with my feed here. <laughs> so hopefully you guys can see me okay. But I just wanted to point that out that basically when you are the administrator and you're on the homepage and you just want to see how things are going, you will go to your course, whatever that course is. And because you're in a shared portal with New Readers Press, what I always do, let's say I just want to see how computer, you know, computer basics. Okay, and I would pull the computer basics up and I would go to, let's say, we'll pull this one up. Nobody's in this one yet. This is computer basics at, I think, Community Center for Immigrants. And it has two instructors in there, but you see there's zero training time. Um, this would allow you to see, and if you clicked on the users, you could see who the users are. Um, you could click, you see me here. Um, and that's when you could see my individual data. Um, what courses I have, it says I have 34 that are in progress. So let's say, you have a student and they have four in progress. So you would see all this information. You could also export it. Um, you could see what badges they have, <laughs> you know, what certificates, I don't have any, but, um, but essentially it's really simple. And if you have any problems or you don't remember something, I know this is being recorded, but again, you can reach out to me. So I just wanted to, make that clear as to the reporting function. So because you are, you have your own courses, you don't really need to create a group unless you are an instructor or tutor. Let's say you have an evening class and you have a morning class and you wanted to divide the students up to keep their metrics separate, then that's probably when you would create a group. And if you added a group, it's really simple you would just create the name of the group, name it something that's sort of unique to your organization and something that you will remember. And then you would click add group. And so then when you're home and you wanted to get information on your group, you could do that. And then the other thing that I want to, let me just go back into a course because I want to show, okay, I'll go back here real fast. Um, there's also a unit matrix, and this is also helpful because when you look at the courses individually, you can actually see where the progress is. So for example, and if you ever don't understand something, just hover your mouse. So it says the green is completed and you, you don't know what this yellow means, but it means in progress. So with this unit matrix tab, this is where you could actually, and again, you can export this in Excel, but you could just see where the progress is in an individual course. So this is at a course level, okay? But if you wanted to see like, okay, the users in this course and the progress that they're making, like who's completed, you know, who might need an extra nudge, that is done under the users tab, okay? So any questions about that? And you can see the time, how much time, um, you know, students are spending, et cetera. So that is sort of the basis of the reporting function. And again, I think the best recommendation I can give is just, you know, maybe spend a little bit of time up front just perusing the workbook. Um, just so you're kind of familiar with the information and then, you know, going through that teacher version of the course quickly and then seeing what content, you know, aligns with what you're already doing in your classroom, because I know that's already helpful. Like, of course, you're focused on literacy in a lot of instances, and then you have this digital literacy component. But a lot of times, you know, some of this digital literacy information can reinforce what you're doing in the classroom. If you're, you know, working with your students, you know, we've had customers report like, oh, this is so great that they're learning how to use like a legend to look at data because they need to use this information to prepare for, you know, their upcoming high school equivalency exam or something like that. So I do want to leave some time. Um, you know, just, just in case there are any questions. 
And if there's anything that I left out that you think would be important to show, um, again, I think the best way is just to kind of play around with, with, with going into a course and just looking at some of the, the modules, which I use modules and units interchangeably. Uh, so just when I, if I say unit, that's the same thing as a module. Where is the, because this is the question I'm always going to ask, where is the FAQ? <laughs> oh, yeah, good question. So the oh, there FAQ, it is. Okay. Go the more. The FAQ is here. Okay, if I could just get that to work there. And so here are the, the questions, and we add to them. Um, so here is the FAQs. Um, and also, if you're not logged in, you can access the FAQs at the portal, the New Readers Press portal. So you do have this more <laughs> drop down menu here. It's not in intuitive, but yeah, great question. So any other questions? So again, the main thing about this learning management system, <clears throat> excuse me, is just to understand the roles, administrator, that's going to get you to basically this dashboard. The instructor is where you actually can enter the courses. Um, you have this right menu, which is a quick way. And the thing here is just to keep in mind is the assignments. Um, and you're, you'll also, if you're in a course where students have submitted assignments, um, I want to go to a course that might already have assignments submitted. But you'll also get notices within that course for the each individual unit. And you might show like, oh, there are three people who have submitted this assignment. And then you can just grade that assignment with, you don't have to put a letter grade, but just whether or not the student passed it or didn't. And then this learner role is just basically what the student will see um, in terms of how they will navigate the course as a learner. And the students will also be able to look at their own progress um, if they're in that learner role. Um, they'll be able to look at you know, the certificates they have, their overall, what they've completed, the time in the course, if they want that infographic um, for that, they can also have their infographic and it will show all their courses here, the training time, it will show you know, what they've passed, how many courses they've completed. And here you see in progress, 77.8% for me. <laughs> so it's pretty intuitive, I hope. And, um, and again, you know, just putting everything in bite-sized chunks, making sure that the content is engaging and that it's relevant and that it's useful and that it's practical um, and they get exposure to things they'll, they'll have to do. Um, I did not demonstrate, but I can since we have a few more minutes unless someone has a question, but just some of the things. So this is um, a different course that is not broken down and I'm in the, okay instructor version of it, but I just wanted to point out a couple of things. Um, so again, there's Google Docs, you know, PowerPoint, we use PowerPoint, but again, Google Sheets can be used. I want to go over, um, let's see, there's an assignment um, where the students Okay, so here I'm in the instructor version, but just basic things. Like if you have a utility bill, we realize that before a student can pay their bill online or really understand it, they need to understand some of the common terminology, like who is the payee? Who is the, you know, what is the address? And be able to find this sort of information. So in the student's version, they're asked these questions. You actually have the answer in your instructor version, but you can print this out you can zoom to make it better if you don't like, you're not a paper person, which is fine. Um, and so students can basically peruse an actual utility bill and you can do this with them. And then I think in maybe one of the knowledge checks or maybe one of the assignments, they actually have another bill and they are asked information just to reinforce, to make sure that they understood, okay, 
this is where I find this information. This is how I understand what the, who the payee is and, you know, the information I need if I am going online to make sure that I can cross reference, like, okay, is that the right account number? Am I looking at the right amount of information that needs to be paid? Because sometimes you do have a lot of dollar values and figures, but understanding, okay, the 14302, is that accurate? So just trying to be very practical again with the content so that there is meaning and they understand, okay, well, these are things that I'm gonna learn that I can really implement in my everyday life. I do have a, a maybe a little bit of a bigger picture question. So, I mean, uh, when I look at this and I've you know looked at you know presentations at this a, a couple of times now, more than a couple of times, and I, and I keep seeing it as like a segment of a time that a teacher is working with a class or an individual student. Like this is, you know, it's shaking it up a little bit because, you know, you need to, you need to learn a skill and it's really applicable. But if I were to um, imagine it in my head on how I'm going to lay it out, knowing that I had a teacher guide, that'll save a lot of time. But would you, I tend to want to lean more towards starting the instruction with the physical book. Yes. Does that make, does that make, the way to the way to start it Absolutely. does that make sense yeah. okay so that's you're starting out with the first unit you know and then but you you, you want to going to find out whether or not your students have a certain level of knowledge and i know you know they are you yeah. wisconsin literacy to using north star so that'll help a little bit in assessing where somebody needs to go mm -hmm. but really this resource is like to do the instruction you know starting from the beginning and you can just simply use it with the book the online is the big bonus. Yeah. You know, absolutely. sort of the practical application with the book. Yeah. Okay. You have a license, but yes, you could start with the book. The online, again, is just, okay, here is more reinforcement. Here is more examples for them to engage with interactive content. But yes, the foundational, the book is the foundation. And then the great thing about it is when you go online, um, and even when the students are online, there are references to specific pages in the actual um, online content. So for example, um, and I'm in here as the, so the student, may, the student may come across something and it might say, please review X, Y, and Z on page 55 of the workbook, because we're about to ask you some more questions about that. And I know in the section on the course that's on spreadsheets, and so in the workbook, it's actually um, the lesson on software, there are some tables there. And so there's more, you know, there's more, basically there, there are additional opportunities to practice what's being taught. So there's a reference to the tables that are already in the workbook. There are questions that are asked, and then there are more questions to make sure the students understand as far as a, a, a spreadsheet is concerned, the rows and the column, like how to locate data. Um, and I could pull that up, but, but that's just an example. So yes, the foundation is the workbook. Start with the workbook. Um, if you don't want your students to, to go online, I hope that, that you will, um, because they're going to get, you know, more, again, reinforcement, more to an opportunity to build more confidence, but ideally the two go hand in hand. This is definitely a companion curriculum that's here. So um, start with the workbook and then just build on that. Any questions? I know we're at the top of the hour. So, um, but I just wanna thank you all for, for coming out and for you know, being here to see how this information um, can help you again advance and elevate your adult learners and um, incorporate some of the information with what you're already doing. And if you have any questions, please feel free to give me, um, email me. I think most of you have my email address from the implementation guide, and there's also contact information there. So I'll hand it back over to you, Marcia. Well, thank you, Angela. This was wonderful. There are some really cool features, and I agree that the uh, 
the stuff that we've seen is is just wonderful. Um, I put a note in the chat that if you uh, need additional student um, workbooks, if you didn't get the full set and you think you could use it, by all means, please let me know and I will make certain that, that we get that to you. Um, this has been absolutely wonderful, Angela. Thank you so much. Um, again, I would invite any of you to uh, unmute if you have a quick question before we go. But as she said, you can certainly email her. But it's one of those things that, that it might be a question we all want to know. And Anne, thank you for, for doing that because you were two seconds ahead of me in asking a couple <laughs> of those questions. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that as well. Yeah. So this, go ahead, Juan. I have a couple of questions. Um, thank you for the presentation. It was really, really good. It's great to know these resources. Uh, one of the questions is, do you think by the end of uh, having uh, going to this course, the student will be able to take, fully capable to take online classes without assist with much assistance? Yes, because essentially what these micro courses are, are online classes. Is this something that I wanted to get to my objectives on the computer literacy so that we can move students to online classes? And the other question is, is uh, this a pro is um, this course appropriate for high level ELL students? Absolutely. Like what, what language is the, like the course is kind of like what grade level is it? Um, in terms of languages that based uh, this course? So I said, I think generally like six, um, I would say, but, you know, I think given the practicality, that's what makes it useful. Because sometimes we might think we know how to do something. So sometimes even having a refresher is helpful, but, and the good thing is with a lot of the videos, which is really helpful for language learners is there's closed captioning because we do tend to use YouTube. Um, and bring those in. So that even helps as they're listening to a video just to turn on the closed captioning. Great, thank you so much. No, thank you for the questions. Good, and don't forget, um, Jamie, our digital person is offering North Star uh, in, as part of her program. So as you heard, this dovetails with North Star. So if you're already working with Jamie, great. You, use both. Um, if you're not, by all means, either reach out to her or to me and I'll connect you. But I, I just wrote to somebody today, I think the more options we give our tutors and our students, the better off they're going to be because everybody can learn something in a little different way. So we hope, uh, we hope you, you'll be able to put this to good use. Okay, well, thanks everybody. Appreciate you all being here. This has been recorded. Um, I'll capture it and it'll get up on our website and we'll let you know if you wanna share it with your staff or your teachers. Thanks, have a great rest of the week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, thanks, Angela. Thank you.